Howdy! Welcome to another Nonsense Wars production. Today we'll be taking a look at a GBC module. This module is called Dozer Linkage, and it's named because it uses a 4-bar linkage to move a dozer bucket from the front end loader sets to pick up balls and dump them out. So I built this module for Bricks by the Bay 2022, and I made a couple minor edits to it afterwards based on my experiences running there, mostly to do with input height and output height. This is somewhat similar to a module that Philo built in the early 2000s in that it's also using a 4-bar linkage and the dozer bucket, but the exact shape of this linkage is a little different. I mentioned this uses a 4-bar linkage. This is actually a 6-bar linkage, which is one 4-bar linkage driving another 4-bar linkage. So I'll undo the crank here. So the actual 4-bar linkage is this black beam as the base. The red and the yellow, uh, white links here, and then the bucket as the last link. These two arms are crossed, so the bucket rotates this way as it moves. So this is the movement from the 4-bar linkage. So like many other GBC modules involving a linkage, this is driven off a crank. So there's a worm and a 24, so it's 1 to 24 off the motor. That turns this crank, this yellow crank here, which pushes this linkage to move the main linkage of the bucket. Now, in the instructions, instead of this assembly, I have this part, this built-together crank. And you would think that this built-together crank is probably just like a nicer way to do it. But what always happens when you run the GBC at shows is any moving part gets worn out gradually. So in this case, this pin and the receptacle on this beam will wear. In the case of this assembly, you could just pull the pin and replace it with a new one if it wears out. But the pin is integral on this part. So if it wears, you're, you have to replace the entire part. Can't tell if that's worse than having this wear out. The feed mechanism, the dozer act, this bin has a fairly large capacity, and if this just opened the floodgates to the input here, uh, something bad would happen if, say, the previous module dumped a batch of 30 balls. Well, you push the gate down, 30 balls attempt to enter the dozer, and they don't fit, and they spill over the side. So this mechanism here, the tipper, picks up basically one row of balls and empties it into the dozer avoiding a problem where too many balls go in at once. You'll notice that in the tipped position, these slope bricks come up and balls that enter get stuck and can't run straight into the dozer bin itself. A couple other features. You notice that I'm using the minifig base here. Uh, this is not because it's better to have a large piece instead of multiple 2x3 tiles. 2x3 tiles would have fit. These, are a, these studs are a break, so if a module here shoots the balls quickly, they don't ramp, ski, ramp up here and ski jump off into the mechanism. The tipper itself isn't actually held by anything. Uh, there's just a counterweight underneath it. Uh, and this yellow part is a tongue that gets pushed on by the dozer linkage itself, like that. In our Bricks by the Bay review video, we talk about one of the problems being modules sliding around. And if you build your modules lightly, like I do, that's a con problem. This module is, doesn't contain that many parts and isn't that heavy. And so if you jostle the table, it can become unaligned with neighboring modules. A fix for that, aside from making the module heavier, is to make it have more friction with the table. So the first upgrade here is the feet. These are just the Technic rubber link part on a pin, and it's trapped from two sides by plates, so it has no place to go and sticks out just a little bit. And that's enough to keep the module on the table and not moving. The second quality of life feature is this. It's simply a two by one by three curved slope. And this traps the wire 
in a one plate wide and half plate thick, uh, one stud wide and half plate thick gap, so it can't easily move. On this module, that's important because I don't want the wire to pop up and interfere with this counterweight, but you may find a useful technique for cable management on your modules as well if you have to route it near mechanisms. This module features a four bar linkage in it uh, for the main motion. And I'm guessing a lot of people develop these by just sort of pinning links and using trial and error to get the movement that they want. And you can do it that way, but this is not, this is not the only way to make four bar linkages. You can actually determine in advance the motion you want and not have to guess at the correct positions, which is what I did for this module. So I'm going to show you how I did it. There's a process called two-position synthesis. You need to determine the motion that you want the linkage to go through first. For GBC, this is pretty convenient because there's a spec for where you need to pick up balls and where you need to dump them. So to give us some room to work with, we're going to pick up the balls a little lower and drop them off a bit higher. If you haven't seen it before, this is Lego grid paper the vertical lines are one stud apart, and the horizontal lines are one plate apart. So when we're done here, we can just translate this to Lego. So we're going to pick up the balls at seven bricks off the ground and dump them off some distance away at 12 bricks off the ground. This gives us some room relative to the spec to have a little ramp below 10, bringing the balls in, and a little ramp here above 10, dumping the balls out. What's reasonable? Uh, I have the bucket here, I have, well, a cutout of the bucket, which is a lot easier to use. And so the bucket has to be at this angle, roughly, to pick up the balls. So the idea is they'll come here and they'll roll into the bucket bin. So we're going to draw the bucket like that. And uh, I'm just going to shade this in. But it's actually not important where the bucket itself is. What's important is these two dots I've drawn which are where the holes in the bucket are. So similarly, the output, the bucket has to be not just up here, it has to be at this angle so that the balls will roll out of the bucket. So I'll just draw it, you know, about here. Something like that. So now we have two possible positions for the bucket. We have our start position and the end position. And the goal is to design a linkage that moves the bucket in such a way that it occupies these two positions at some point in its travel. It's important to keep track of which hole is which. So this is the top hole on the bucket. So I'll call this A1. And then this is the top hole on the bucket again. You can see it's been rotated at the final position. We'll call that A2. Similarly, this is the bottom hole, B1. And here's the bottom hole again, B2 in the second position. So position one, position two. So what we want is a line that's exactly the same distance from these two points. Now you could do that by, say, drawing, measuring the distance between the two points, making a mark, turning this 90 degrees and drawing a line. But that's not going to be very accurate because this could wiggle around. The better way to do this is to use a compass. So you can Make one mark there, make one mark there. So that's one side of the line. And so since the compass didn't change size while I was doing any of that, those two points, that point is the same distance from both of those. This point is the same distance from both of those. And now I can just draw a line through them. Like that. So this is the a bisector. So I've drawn both bisectors now, A and B. So we're going to have four bar linkages. There's one, one link is 
the page, it's the ground link. The second link is the bucket, which is in these two positions. So we gotta put the last two links in place. One of them will start on this line somewhere and end at both of those points. And the other will start on this line somewhere and end at the other two points. So they could go, you know, they could go this way, or one of them could be, you know, over here like that, or they could both be over here. In practice, we're restricted to links that are over here. To make things easier on ourselves, we are going to just use whole numbers of Lego studs as the lengths. Now, before we go further, it's important to understand that how to measure the length of a link. This lift arm has five holes in it, and while it is five studs long from end to end, it's only four studs long for the purposes of this exercise. And why is that? And that, that's because the distance between these holes is one stud. So one, two, three, four. So a five hole link is four studs long. Once we've decided that we're going to use a whole number of studs for the length of the link, we can just mark every single spot on the line that's a whole number of studs away from either of the holes. So we could do that. The way I do it is use a compass, but you could actually do this by just holding a rod and just marking it and it'll be good enough. But this is easier to see. So let's start with the shortest practical link is this. So maybe four, one, there, one, two, three, four. Okay, so from A, it would be right in the middle there. So probably not gonna use that one because you also notice it's four from, not quite four from B, it's over here. Right here, this is A, uh, four. So then we can extend this to one, two, three, four, five. So I've gone ahead and marked off possible position, whole number of positions, you know, five, five studs, six studs, seven studs, eight studs, nine studs, 10 studs. Once you've done this, these are the mounting positions that you're gonna have to find to put the links so that the bucket goes in the correct movement. Uh, and there's a couple of ways that you could choose which mounting positions to use. Your choice of mounting position won't influence the start and the ending positions. Those are guaranteed, but it will change the path the bucket takes between them. So it could spin a little faster, spin a little slower, go farther out, stay farther in. So one way to pick the mounting positions is to pick ones uh, using the grid that are conveniently located. So a Technic hole is right between two studs. So you find, say, A8 is right between two studs. So you put a brick there. And the other one is, you know, B6 is basically right between two studs. So you put a brick there. The other way is to do what I've done on this module. You can see that both A and B links are pinned to a tilted beam. And so you just need a B, find a pair of holes where the separation is a whole number. We're gonna demonstrate one of the possible linkages. Playing the role of our bucket will be a 40th anniversary three length beam, which has the right hole spacing. So it does have to imagine the rest of the bucket is hanging off of this. Uh, as I mentioned, you pick A8 and B6. So these holes are in the right spot. A six is a seven, so like that. And the eight is this nine. And if you were to attach a crank, just push it all the way through like that. And so the bucket would have rolled over in the middle. See it like that. Then here, the bucket would be at that angle. And here, the bucket would be this angle. So this linkage would have also worked.